TK's Two Cents. What's up? What's up, my people? Welcome. I'm streaming live right here on Twitter, Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. Uh, for those of you all who tuned in last week, you know this is a little experiment I'm conducting. I, I post a lot of tweets. I get a lot of questions. I get some good engagement. I get a lot of good suggestions. And so this is my opportunity to take it beyond 140 characters and talk a little bit about uh, the context behind these tweets or maybe some ideas I have to illustrate them or to help you lend practical application to the concepts. So um, if you got any questions, any thoughts, anything like that, don't hesitate to, to reach on out to me on Twitter. These will not be long. I'm never going over 15 minutes. I just decided I want to do that. I want this to be fun. I want this to be sustainable. So when I see it hit 15 minutes, no matter where I am, I'm just cutting it off. I'm stopping. I think last time I did go 20 minutes, but that was my first time. The scent. I should call this TK's two Satoshis for all my, my Bitcoin peeps out there. But let's dive into this first tweet and let's talk about it for a minute. All right. When you give up your need to have the last word, you find the courage and freedom to say the first word. Man, one of the things that used to hold me back big time when I first started writing is I would have all these people in my imagination who would make objections to what I say. So maybe I would think of something like, hey, give your best effort, right? I mean, I, I know that's kind of cheesy to say, but you know, that's a good message to me. So maybe that's what I want to write, right? I want to write, give your best effort. And then I would have in my imagination some cat saying, yeah, but everybody can't give their best all the time. And then in my imagination, I would respond back to that person and be like, yeah, man, but that's what I meant. Give your best effort. And then I would go back and forth arguing with that person in my imagination and then eventually I would just be too exhausted to write anything. And so I never gave myself permission to say what I wanted to say, because I would think about all the different ways that people would misunderstand it or that people would disagree. And I just didn't feel like arguing, just didn't feel like, you know, putting up with anything. And so I didn't write at all. And that is amazing how often that happens where we can silence ourselves. We can fail to use our voice because we worry that basically we're not going to have the last word. And here's the interesting thing about creating anything, whether it's you composing a song, you painting a picture, writing a book, writing a blog post, recording a podcast episode, doing a video like this. You know what the hardest thing about creating is? At some point, you got to stop. That's the hardest part about creativity. You, you can't go on forever. You can't make an infinitely long movie. You can't make an infinitely long song. You can't write a book that never ends. You can take a long time to make sure it captures what you want to say. You can take 50 years to write a book or a song if you want. But even then, at some point, you got to stop. And what, whatever that stopping point is, I can guarantee you one thing. There will always be at least one more thing that you could have said about that topic, right? So no matter how good of a communicator you are, no matter how interesting and innovative your thoughts are, you will never be able to say everything that can possibly be said about a topic. And so if, if you allow the fact that there's going to be someone who comes after you, who carries the discussion forward, or who misunderstands, or who disagrees, or who says, I think you should have, you know, captured it from this angle, or hey, you know, you should have said it like this, or maybe you could have said it like this, that's never going to be a possibility that you're exempt from. But here's how you release yourself from the burden of feeling like you got to have the last word. You understand that the whole point of communicating is not to settle the issue. The point of communicating is to stimulate thought. It's to keep the conversation alive. Every human being that will ever exist has a unique perspective, a unique vantage point, and we all have something to contribute to every conversation. Now, we, we contribute at different levels of value, but we're all here to have our say on the plights and possibilities of human existence. And so, your job as a communicator is to keep that conversation alive and to challenge someone to think in a new direction, even if they don't agree with everything that you say. One of my favorite quotes, I forget who said it, was something to the effect of the problem in this world is not that people think incorrectly, but that people don't even think at all. You know, And whenever we write something or put our perspective out there, we challenge people to think. Sometimes you know, you, you, it's a lot easier to to um, co comment on someone else's content than it is to create content, right? This is why there will always be more YouTube video, YouTube comments than there will be YouTube videos, right? Way more YouTube comments than YouTube videos because it's easier to comment on what somebody else creates than it is to create. But here's the thing. 
when you create and other people comment on what you say, you are literally creating a discussion that gives other people the courage to use their voice. Most people are intimidated to take the lead on a conversation and put their thoughts out there as an isolated piece of content to be criticized. So when you exercise the courage to create your content, you create a context where other people who may not be as courageous as you can come forward and say, hey, I just got something that I wanna add to your thought. It's always easier to add to somebody else's thought than to come up with the thought yourself than to start the conversation yourself. So whenever you take the um, take that leap, and start the conversation, you make it easier for other people who are less courageous or, you know, whatever to get involved. And that's a good thing. Another thing to keep in mind too is, you know, some of your best ideas are going to come from paying attention to the way that people misunderstand you and disagree with you. I'll be the first to say there's a lot of uncharitable interpretation of people's words on the internet. And it annoys me too. It frustrates me too sometimes, but without exception. Every time somebody misunderstands me, even if I don't reply to them all the time, time is limited. Every time somebody disagrees with me, it always makes me walk away from that experience with a heightened awareness of the different ways in which my words are landing with people and the different ways I can communicate my thoughts. And that's always good. That's always beneficial to you as a creator. So give up the need to have the last word because you don't need to have the last word. The purpose of communicating is to keep the conversation alive so that other people can use their voice and so that we can all become better thinkers. And once you realize that, it's like, hey, you got the courage now to get started with whatever it is you wanna create. Um, just, just put yourself out there and don't put pressure on yourself to, to, to put an end to all the debates and, and to put something in a way that's so deep that's so dope that everybody listens and says, oh, this dude just dropped the mic and closed out the conversation. You know, in, in the coaching world, we call that having a boom moment. Sometimes you just have this moment where you get revved up and you say something in a way that's so spicy. It's like, boom, you know, like shut it down. If, if you put pressure on yourself to always have a boom moment, you'll, 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 you'll never have an initial moment of just getting started. You don't always need to have a boom moment. Just put it out there and get started. Let's move to the next tweet. All right, attention is currency. If you're willing to spend it on anything, you'll eventually be duped out of everything. Man, this is more important today than ever before because we have so many forces vying for our attention. Just think about this. Prior to 30 years ago, most of your communication was locally. It happened with the people in your family, the people that you worked with, the people in your neighborhood, the people that attended school with you. And, you know, for the most part, your contact with strangers was when you went to like a grocery store, a shopping mall or something like that. And even then you had a lot of rest regulars in, in those places. And even then when you interacted with strangers, it was understood that this is gonna be a temporary interaction and it's gonna be mostly superficial. We didn't really have deep, serious, intense discussions with strangers on a day-to-day -day basis. Those were things we did with people at our church, people in our neighborhood, et cetera. Now, for the first time in history with the internet, we are literally having everyday conversations about super intense, super serious, super important issues with complete strangers. People that we don't even know, people whose motives we don't really know, people whose background we don't really know. We don't even know if the, the, the photo they're using or the name they're using is real half the time, right? And so that means the need to manage our attention is more important than ever before. Here's what I'm gonna say about this topic. If you don't take the time to develop a philosophy of when you will and when you won't participate in a conversation, you are gonna wear yourself out and be easily manipulated. I'm telling you now, a lot of people say, well, the internet is manipulating us. Social media is manipulating us. And I, I get all of that, but I also think that the internet is exposing us. It's exposing the fact that most of us have never really taken the time to, to develop any kind of standards about when we're gonna put our attention on something. And so every time we see now trending, we just immediately think, oh, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna go trend. Think about what life would be like if you lived, you know, um, every area of your life like this. Think about, you know, you get in the car and you just drive in any direction without any sense of purpose. You just say, I'm just going to drive and hopefully I get there. You haven't defined where there is. You haven't evaluated the road that you're taking to see if it's going to get you where you want to be. You just start driving, right? Or imagine if you went into a restaurant. 
You didn't think about your allergies. You didn't think about your dietary specifications. You didn't think about any of that. You just said, I'm just going to pick something off the menu at random and let's just see if I enjoy that. You know, now, if that's your predefined purpose, that that's why you went in the restaurant, that can turn out to be a good time. But if you got allergies, you got dietary specifications and you truly want to eat in a way that's healthy to you, you've got to be deliberate. You've got to be purposeful. You've got to think ahead of time when you get in that car, where am I trying to go? How soon do I need to be there? And let's pick the road that's going to get me there in, in time. When you sit down at a restaurant, you say, what do I need in order to live consistently with my idea of health? I'm going to order in accordance with that. You got to do the same thing as you participate in. You got to do the same thing with material that you consume on the internet. You've got to be guided by a sense of purpose. It doesn't need to be a super serious sense of purpose. It can be playful. You can say, I'm just going on the internet right now because I want to find something to laugh at. I'm just going on the internet right now because I want to relax and chill because I've been working all day. Whatever it is, you have the right to choose what your purpose is. But understand, you've got a limited amount of time, a limited amount of energy. You've got people that need you and purposes that need you. And you simply cannot afford to just follow every trend, participate in every debate and look at everything that somebody is sitting before your eyes. If you do that, you're going to be a puppet that somebody else is pulling the strings for. And you need to be the puppet master of your own life. Peace. I'm out. That's it. We have 15. Got to go.